Okay, good morning guys. We are here at the Grand Hotel Saigon this morning. Um, sorry if I sound a little bit different. Um, I'm a bit tired. Um, today we're actually uh, heading out to uh, Mune. So uh, this is going to be my first ride. My real first ride that's not a practice. Uh, out in the open a little bit. Um, I'm going to have my cousin drive within the city limits for now. And then once we get out um, beyond that point, I'm gonna I'm gonna take over. So last night was the uh, last night we could have practiced. So I was at my uncle's place or her dad um, until 1:30 a.m. I got back here at like 2 a.m. before I got to bed. Um, it is currently about 6:15. So I was in bed for less than four hours and we have a long trip ahead of us several hundred kilometers so but I needed to wake up so I can give you guys the, the breakfast review because you know I can't just sleep in that's that's not possible but uh yeah so let's let's have a look what they've got okay I haven't actually seen anything yet but oh man Actually, in this place, you get a lot of options for uh, drinks because you get soy milk, which wasn't readily available at the other places. But you also get your, uh, your cold water, orange juice, passion fruit drink, um, melon juice water, and uh, guava. You actually get guava here, which is pretty nice. Um, you get a huge assortment of... Uh, teas or coffees there which is really really nice you get ooh, kumquat mango dried dried fruits dried tomatoes raisins for anyone who likes that kind of selection uh, ooh. so you don't get homemade yogurt or anything like that you actually get a uh, packaged yogurt but oh, that means I have to try more than one of them You get your uh, desserts. You get your, let's see, there we go. Um, the only one I really know is the flan. The agar agar I've heard of, um, but I have not tried yet, but I, I will. Um, you actually have uh, your cheeses. Eat them. Haven't heard of that one actually. Eat them uh, in metal, mozzarella, brie. Uh, Two out of four ain't bad. Uh, you actually even get your salami, and it's a DIY salami. That's pretty nice. You get your con little condiments. Oh, okay, so the salami's over here. This is a uh, pepper salami over there. Um, olive salami, pate, pork bologna. Pork bologna? Really? Huh. Holy crap, you actually get blue cheese. You get your salmon. Your sushi and condiments for sushi. Your salad bar items. And, oh crap, there are more stations. This is actually quite a large selection here. Your plates all covered. Let's see, you get your uh, grilled chicken, your sauteed vegetables, which looks like a. Uh, what is that? A uh, Chinese cabbage or something like that? Um, your sauteed rice flour, uh, rice noodle, your uh, fried rice, more condiments, soy sauce. boiled eggs for anyone who uh, likes something a little bit more boring I guess generalized German pork sausage it's actually not bad then you get your uh, beef pork curry and baked beans you know I don't I'm not a beans person but I guess I have to try this to see how how American it is really but Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's the good stuff. You get, you get the bacon right here. 
Then you get the uh, baked tomato. I'm assuming that's a Parmesan cheese on top. Um, mini pizza. These are like bite-sized pizza, pizza rolls actually. It's kind of like that. It's not bad. Then you get your, let's see. Oh, your normal steamed rice, freshly made, miso soup. Oh, this is a, a porridge, which is a gao, which is a rice soup. Um, fairly flavorless. That's why you're supposed to add the beef uh, pork floss to it um, to flavor it up a bit. The green bean sticky rice. Uh, let's see, sweet buns, steamed pork buns. So that's the Chinese side. Uh, shall my, uh, I don't know. I have to go look at what the last two is because I have no idea what that is. Oh, okay, so uh, it's a steamed dumpling. These are steamed dumplings and uh, oh, pork and shrimp. And, oh, they're both pork and shrimp actually. Um, but this one looks like a, it's made up with egg too. But uh, let me let you guys go and uh, get a plate and see how, how things are. Okay guys, we are back with the food and the items that I got are either, you know, culturally specialty items or uh, items that uh, like the, the dumplings and such um, items that may determine how good this buffet is like the salmon how, how fresh that is or how it's made and then certain items that uh, you compare to other cultures which include like let's say the beans and the sausage the German pork sausage and the beans let's see how that kind of compares to um, the ones you can buy at the store and the ones that you know like the beans that you make in America let's see what they compare to um, but let's start with the drinks because I'm a little thirsty. So the one over here is a, a guava juice. So let, let's see what that's like. Okay. So uh, that's actually not as sour as I thought it would be. That's actually much milder, which is incredibly helpful because the real thing can be quite sour. Um, one of the good things is, uh, it doesn't taste like there's any sugar added whatsoever. Um, that's most likely fresh, actually. Hmm. You would think, uh, you know, with, with the size of the hotel um, and how many people come here, they thought they might have cut corners on some of this, but uh, yeah, um, definitely not from a bottle or anything like that. But, uh, or a carton, really. Let's see what the orange juice is like. Wow, okay, um, that's a lot sweeter than I thought it would be. This, does that have added sugar then? Is this, is this pre-made? Hmm. It, doesn't, it doesn't have a strong orange smell to it. So I'm, I'm unsure about that one. It is a lot sweeter than uh, what I would expect from a, a fresh orange juice actually, but uh, let's jump right to the, the watermelon water. That, that is smooth. That is nice. Holy crap. And you get all this. That's just, that just tastes like watermelon, but it's so smooth because obviously um, there's a little tiny bit of pulp in there, but the pulp is so fine that you just drink it as normal. Like there's a hint of texture to it, but not enough to, you know, turn it into not a drink. It, it's still a drink, which is, oh, that's good. Watermelon water seems to be my favorite. But uh, I got bacon. Um, technically, I don't have to get bacon because we all know what bacon tastes like. So, yeah, that that's just, that's not for you guys. That's just purely for me. Uh, I actually have, I don't believe I've ever had brie. So I got the brie just to try out because I can't review this because I don't know what it's like elsewhere, but I'm gonna have to assume this is exactly the same as it is elsewhere because it's probably not made here. So it's probably been shipped over. So I guess whatever it tastes like should be no surprise to anyone uh, who's ever had it. Mm. I'd say, I'd say that's a fairly mild 
mild cheese. The texture is absolutely great. Like, it's so fantastically soft. And then when you, when you press on it, it just covers your tongue. It just covers your entire tongue. It's, ooh, the texture is great. You get a, like a sea salt kind of flavor to it. Like, like, like it was in a brine. Is it, had it been in a brine? I'm assuming it, but it, it tastes like it's been brined. Um, you get that hint of saltiness to it. But uh, let's go to this dumpling, the steamed dumpling. And for these, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay true to what they are. I'm not gonna dip it in soy sauce. Like soy sauce is a pretty standard flavor. I don't want to ruin ruin what it actually tastes like. Well, let, let's see what this uh, this dumpling's like. So it tastes like your standard fair uh, uh, pork and shrimp dumpling. Um, normally, I think um, I've actually had a lot of a. Uh, noodle soups that have had this in them so that's kind of what i'm used to and the uh the dough is quite quite soft and malleable that was good it wasn't like hard at the edges or anything like that because if you get like a little bit of hardness at the edges that means it's been sitting out for a little while this this was soft all over it was it was really really good so you know you can't do a, a test of vietnamese food without uh, the bun bao or a pork bun. Let's, let's see what it's like. Ooh, I can always... It's so soft. So, it feels like this is like a pre-made item. The reason I say that is because um, the center is a very tightly packed and it's in like a perfect bowl. Um, usually that means that it's not handmade. Um, you usually get a, a very inconsistently uh, shaped item uh, of meat in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, cafe. Yeah. Come on. So, uh, even though there is coffee, um, they walk around pouring coffee and, and tea and stuff, which is really, really nice. Now I have coffee. But yeah, um, the bun is quite soft. Um, I guess I've had I've had fluffier, but but that's no big deal there. Um, the bun is actually has a uh, more sugar than normal. The bun is actually quite sweet, which you know. Is a good and a bad thing. Health-wise, bad. Traditionally, and eh, not not very traditional to have a lot of added sugar. Um, but the texture is great. The sweetness actually is good. I'm not saying it's bad or anything. I'm just saying it's it's different. Um, the meat is a, a little dense. It's as you can tell, it's very tightly packed. Um, but flavor-wise. Flavor wise, there's nothing wrong with it. So, uh, actually, let's go to this. Well, actually, I have to say the same thing about the salami as I do the cheese. It's probably imported, so I shouldn't be surprised by any of these flavors. I don't. I guess most, like most of the meats here, is just mainly for me. And then I uh, also got the uh, black pepper one. Even as you know, I got it as if I don't know what black peppers taste like. Mm. Man, I haven't had that in a long time. <clears throat> You get a nice, strong, salty, cured flavor. Mm, it's so good. Um, but here comes the salmon, actually. The salmon is usually a pretty good indicator at most places um, of how good the buffet is because the salmon can easily be old, easily. So uh, let's try this, uh, I believe, smoked salmon. Oh, so one of the things that uh, looks like is they cut it quite thick compared to uh, a lot of other places. A lot of other places, 
do it like wafer thin. Um, this one actually has some thickness to it. So yeah, I really like that. Um, the salmon is fresh. It, it kind of falls apart. Um, you get that smoky, smoky flavor to it. It is really good. Mm. And here, here we get a, a sweet bun. Let's. Ooh. Is that? No, it's just texture. It's not paper. Usually they have a little bit of a paper at the bottom, like the bun bow. Uh, let's see what the sweet bun's like. Okay. So I thought there was a filling. There is no filling. Huh. Oh, this really is a surprise because the bun on this is a lot sweeter. The, 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 bun, the sweet bun itself is less sweet. Hmm. Did they mix it? The... That's weird. So, if you want a sweet bun, get the bun bao, take the meat out. If, you, if what you want is a sweet bun, because this is a lot sweeter. So, uh, let, let's head off to this plate here. And let's go to the thing that's closest to me which is the uh, German sausage, pork sausage to be exact. But uh, you know, nothing looks out of the ordinary. Let's, let's try it out. It's kind of like a, uh, hmm. kind of like a hot dog casing. It's, it's not a real casing. The texture on the sausage is uh, actually quite firm. Very dense. Yep, yep, yep. Watermelon, still my favorite. But since this is here, let's uh, let's try the coffee now. Let's let's see what that's like. Uh, nothing added. Nothing added at all. Ooh. Mm. That is a dark roast. That's, that'll wake you up. Mm. That, that's good. That, that's a really dark roast. Like, I don't know if I want to add anything. Uh, I probably shouldn't. Let's, let's keep it genuine. But uh, let's try this tomato because I'm assuming it's just tomato sprinkled with uh, Parmesan. I assume it's Parmesan. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, it's a, there might be some oil on there, but I think pretty much it's just two ingredients, tomato and Parmesan. So yeah, just your regular run of the mill tomato. Um, this is not an organic tomato, or no. this is not uh, like a homegrown tomato by any means. Um, it's just your general supermarket tomato. Um, the reason is um, when it comes to like GMO plants, um, they're mo mainly built for, for shipping purposes. They're made to last a long time. They're made. Sorry about that. That was a bit of a burp. Um, they're made not to bruise and trans transit. They're made to look good. But the thing is, they have a much much lower uh, sugar content than uh, your your normal organic um, tomatoes. And not only that, but they also pick uh, these fruits um, very, very early, very early, so that you know they're green when they're picked, so that they last on the truck, they last um, in, with international shipping. Um, so you know, as the tomatoes mature and ripen, they're not developing any new sugars. So yeah, so it's your standard run-of-the-mill supermarket tomato. But, uh, Let's actually try this curry, this pork curry. Let's see how genuine it is, or at least what it tastes like. Um, I can already tell that the, uh, the the meatballs are like you know the in a bag, frozen type thing. Mm. 
Yeah. It tastes exactly like that, but holy crap. The curry itself? Just the curry? Mm. Oh man. That is fantastic. It's like a... It's like a sweet curry that is uh, spicy. And uh, I love spicy things. Mm. The only complaint I have about it is me because I didn't eat that first, so it's cold now. But, oh man, that is a really, really good curry. Really good curry. Like, I wasn't expecting the sweetness. I wasn't expecting the sweetness at all. And not only that, but with the Western crowd coming here, I wasn't expecting it to be that spicy. It's a, it's a, it's a decent amount of spiciness. Which, yeah, I'm really surprised about. Um, the only thing that could be improved is if you had like a, I don't know if I want to call it a real pork instead of these, uh, these pork balls. But uh, I guess that's the only thing that I would want to change about it is like, you know, give me real pork. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, like the curry is really, really good. It's, because of beans from the United States, um, I have to be honest, I don't have high hopes for these. No, I don't know if they're gonna be as good. Let's try it. Oh, okay. Wow, that was a uh, completely unexpected. Completely unexpected. Because uh, the beans. Wow. Oh, wow. So the beans are not like really, really, really soft like they, they normally are in America. Like, you know, you, normally you slow cook, you cook them for a long, long time, and you know, they become really, you know, kind of fall apart soft. Um, these have a bit of a meatier texture to them. Um, you, you bite into them. Um, like obviously they're not undercooked or anything. They're, they're perfectly fine, but they're not like super, super tender. And then the sauce, I was expecting something else because it is like a general, it's like a general barbecue sauce. Like, it's like the barbecue sauce you would buy on a store shelf to pour it over your like ribs and everything. That's what it tastes like. It tastes, you know, tangy and with a bit of sweetness. Let's just try the sauce. Actually, let's have some more beans. Let's see. Let's get this down. Yeah, it's, it's a tangy barbecue sauce. Hmm. I haven't had beans like that before. That's weird. That's a weird combination. No, me personally, I haven't had beans that have been uh, tangy before. Not my favorite, actually. Um, both the flavor and the texture of the beans. Um, they could have had a like a a sweet brown sugar sauce for the beans. That would have been great. But uh. Yeah, when it comes to straight barbecue sauce, um, I don't like that as much. <clears throat> um, now, you saw, you guys saw before that they do have sushi as well. But the thing is, I already have a lot on my plate. Um, I have to ride a bike today for a long, long distance. I don't want to, I don't want to fill up too much. But, uh, but yeah, the selection here is fantastic. You get a lot of different drink options. You get a lot of different food options. It is a buffet. It is part of everything. And the buffet starts at 6 o'clock. Which means if you come in early, you know, you can start your day early. But not only that, but, you know, you want to get here, beat the crowd a little bit before it gets uh, very uh, loud. Which is uh, fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's a wonderful atmosphere. Um, but if you come here, you're going to see a lot of tourists. This is a you know a five-star hotel. 
um, not very many Vietnamese people would be coming here at all. Okay, so um, most most Vietnamese people could not afford this. This is kind of the price of everything here. It kind of takes a, a Western wallet, if you will. And uh, you know, um, generally speaking, it won't be as traditional. They give you a lot of items. Like most of the items on here are not Vietnamese at all. Um, I wanted to compare them to. You know, their their home country and see how they compare and most of the items well most of the items are probably actually shipped over but most of the items are very comparable um, so this place is uh, will give you that uh, home sweet home kind of feel it doesn't matter where you are because uh, your food came here from there but but yeah um, you know, the room is the room is nice and large. Um, the bed was extremely comfortable. Um, that's one of the things I, I normally don't sleep with a pillow, but all of the beds here have been really, really comfortable despite having enormous pillows. Um, yeah, everything was clean. Everything was done really, really well. Um, yeah, um, the, the staff is amazing. Um, what else can I say, really? Um, a lot of amenities. Um, I am really sorry, guys, that uh, I wasn't able to show you everything, or at least not in the way I wanted, because, yeah, monsoon season. So, <laughs> hopefully when you guys come here, you'll have a bit of a better weather there, but, you know, you have to, you have to deal with it in stride. And you have to expect sometimes it's gonna rain. And, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. But uh, maybe in the future, you guys will see me on the bike while raining. Um, and then the camera might go, you know, 90 degrees sideways, which won't be good, but uh, that might be entertaining, right? But anyways, we are at the Grand Hotel Saigon. And you know what? I don't remember if I got... Um, the GPS coordinates, did I? I don't think I did. Let me, um, let me get you guys the, the GPS coordinates because I don't know how accurate that is. It popped up immediately. Let me close it. Because you, you never know when it uh, refreshes. So I'm gonna start it up from scratch. Okay, so it was accurate. I think it was. I think that was the number. So um, this is where we are right now. Um, this is not the front of the hotel, this is in the, uh, in the breakfast buffet area. Now, they have multiple areas. This is uh, level two, which is technically the third floor. So, they have multiple restaurants here, multiple bars, multiple um, coffee shops and everything like that, massage parlor. So, you know, this is only one of the many amenities that are available. Um, so, so, you know, I, I definitely recommend it if you want the, a five-star feel. And we're here at the Grand Hotel Saigon. And I will see you guys later.